Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this effect that Andrew Kramer came up with in a, an After Effects tutorial quite a while ago. And I've always wanted to show how one might go about doing the same thing in motion because there are a lot of differences between the way the two applications work. So let's get started on this. So let's start by checking out our project settings. And if you follow my tutorials, you'll probably be able to recite these off by heart. We've got 19, 20, 10, 80. We've got 24 frames a second. And this time we've got a duration of 15 seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import an asset to create the floor. It's called cement. So then we are going to make this group a fixed resolution and we're going to make it 8,000 pixels square, 8,000 by 8,000. And to it, we're going to add filters, tiling, collider tile. And we're going to set this up to be 1920 by 1080 because that is the dimensions of my cement image, as you can see over here. So then I'm going to make a new group and put this inside it and then we can take this group and open up the rotation and rotate it through negative 90 degrees on X. And if I temporarily adjust the Y position, you see we've got this massive floor. Uh, so that's an 8,000 by 8,000 floor, which we've created using that collider tile. But it was important to make that group fixed resolution in order to do that. So next we want some shapes to rise up out of the floor. So I'm going to make a new group outside this and I'm going to come down and I'm going to select the circle tool from the menu here, holding down the shift and option key. I'm going to drag out a circle. Just want to set its radius precisely to 100 like so. Next, I'm going to select the rectangle tool and next to the circle, I'm going to draw a rectangle. Come over to geometry and we'll set the size of that rectangle to 200. Then I want to duplicate that rectangle, right click duplicate. Let's move him over a little bit on X. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come to object, convert to points, say yes. And then with the, make sure, making sure the edit points tool is selected from that menu, we're going to delete this control point here. So select it, delete. We're going to come over to shape. Now that point that we have left at the top there is point one. And if we set its X position to zero, we got a nice triangle. So now all our shapes are pretty much of the same size. We can select them all. Let's come to properties. Let's set their Y position to zero. And then we want the circle to be negative 250. We want the rectangle to be zero. These are the X positions. And we want the triangle to be 250. Now let's give them some different colors. So let's first of all select the circle, shape, style, color. Let's make this something like that. Let's come over to the rectangle, style, color, fill, I should say. Let's make that something like this. And then the triangle, let's make that color. Let's come over to here. So I've renamed those two groups. Uh, the floor group I've called floor. This group I've called contents. And I want to make another new group into which I want to put that contents. And then this new group, I'm going to add a rectangular mask. Just going to draw it very roughly initially, something like that. So let's come to its size. Let's make it nice and wide. Let's go for 2,500. And the height, I want to be 1,000 pixels. And then I want to come over to its position and I want to set its Y, let's center that up actually, and then let's set its Y position to positive 500 because that's half of a, of a thousand. So now this is not gonna look quite right because we, we're not yet in 3D, but we can take this contents group and we can animate it uh, through that mask. So I'm going to come to the first frame and I'm going to hit a keyframe and I'm going to have a Y value of negative 150. 
then I'll step forward to three seconds on the timeline and set that to positive one, two, five. And now if we play that, you'll see that those shapes are rising up through that mask. They're not quite right in relation to the floor because you remember we, we sort of moved that floor down to, to there. So if I put it at zero, you'll see that those shapes actually rise out perfectly out of that floor. So I've renamed that enclosing group as foreground. I'm going to close the floor to make a little bit more space here. And now let's look at making these objects glow. So to do that, I'm going to make a clone of this foreground group. So right click make clone layer, and that makes a new group there. So I've renamed that clone as main glow, and let's add some filters to it. So first of all, I'm going to come over and select color, open EXR tone map, and also filters blur, Gaussian blur. So the open EXR tone map, I'm going to set the exposure to three. And then this Gaussian blur, I'm going to set the value to 32. Then I'm going to duplicate that Gaussian blur, right click duplicate. And I'm going to set this value, this new value to 64 and the mix value to 50. I'm sure you've seen me do this before, but it's quite a handy trick really to create a sort of instant glow. Let's duplicate it again. Let's set this one to 128 and the mix value down to 30. You can see how this is all building up quite nicely. And then let's duplicate it one more time. Set this to 256 and the mix value down to 20. And the overall effect of that is really quite nice. You've got this glow effect. And finally, I'll select the clone layer and switch its blend mode to add. Just gives us a little bit more punch on that. So I think it's about time we switched to 3D. So I'm going to take this master group here and switch that to 3D. I'm also going to switch my floor to 3D. And then I'm going to add a camera. I just want to have a little bit of X rotation on this so we can look down at the floor. So I'm going to have a negative 12 on X. And now we're looking down like that. I might also just at this point add a light so it's all looking a bit more convincing. Let's just move that light so it's actually illuminating our scene. Let's come to its Y position and set that to 250. And it's just giving us a nice overall good light on the floor there. But what I also want to make sure I, I do is that this group here that's got everything apart from the floor, I want to come down to its lighting and where it says inherited, I want to turn that off because these are self-illuminating elements and we don't want them uh, affected by the lighting itself. So now let's look at creating some reflection. And to do that, I'm going to make a clone of that foreground group. So right click, make clone layer. And it's made a new group. I'm just going to drag that out to the top there. Uh, we don't want this group to be 3D. So right click, turn off 3D for that. So I've called that group reflection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it through 90 degrees on X. That's the group you can see. And so now you can see that we've got that reflection element there. We just need to add some filters to the clone inside there. So again, I'm going to grab color, open EXR tone map. And again, I'm going to grab blur, Gaussian blur. So the open EXR tone map, I'm going to set the exposure to five. And then the Gaussian blur, let's go for 256 for that. So this isn't looking at all like a reflection, and that's because we need to do something quite fancy with this reflection group. And that's to add an image mask. And then we're going to come down into our floor there, and we've got that thing called group inside floor. And we're going to use that as the mask source. So drag that in there like so. And we need to remember to turn that group back on again. And we're going to set the source channel to luminance. And immediately you can see that's looking much more like a reflection. And what we can do is we can add a filters color levels to this image mask. And then we can just play with the black and white values till we get something that we like. 
just bring them in a little bit more like that. Really depends on how strong or not you want this to be, but you see that the black value creates more of effect of the texture influencing the, the, the reflection. I think I quite like that sort of look. So finally, what we need to do is to create the really interesting part, which is the kind of contact glow as the shapes emerge through the floor. And to do that, we're going to yet again make a clone of that foreground. So right click, make clone layer. Again, we want to make sure that group is switched to 2D, not 3D. And then we're going to make another group above this. So object new group, and we're going to pop that group into that one there. And again, let's switch it to 2D, to 2D not 3D. So I've called that enclosing group contact glows. And I'm going to step in to, down to the clone itself. And what I want to do here is I want to rotate it through 180 on X. And then with the group that the clone is sitting in, but not its master group, so that's the intermediate group there, I'm going to come down and select the rectangle mask tool and draw a rough rectangle mask across the middle of the screen like that. So I'm going to just reset its position, but then I'm going to have negative five for the Y. And then let's just set up its size here. Let's go for 2,500 on the width. And for the height, I want to go for 25. And you can see we're just getting this little small slice there. And that's going to create our effect. So I also want to feather it, so negative 10 on the feather. So let's come back to that top group, the contact glows group. And to that, I want to add filters, stylize, min max. I'm going to switch the mode to maximum. And for the radius, I'm going to have three, just to expand it out just a little bit. And then obviously we want it to glow. So very easily we can select all those filters that we applied to that main glow group and holding down the alt or option key we can drag them onto that contact glows group and we've got that that nice glow effect in this case i'm going to come down and crank up that open exr tone map a little bit more so let's go for five on that so it really kind of burns through and then for this contact glows group as before we need to come and switch its blend mode to add. We just need to do make one final little tweak and that's with this contact glows group selected to come to its Z position and just move it back a tiny amount on Z. So we're going to go for negative five and that just makes it sort of sit in the middle of the effect a little bit more. So there you go, you get, it's a really, really, really nice effect I think. It's the bit for me that, that really makes this. Now, because the colors I chose for my shapes were a little bit um, so saturated, it's not quite as bright and punchy as I want it to be. So I'm going to come to my, down to my foreground group there, and I'm going to come to color, uh, hue saturation. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to increase that value all the way up to two. And now we get something a lot more powerful, I think. And that's, that floor glow really kicks through there, I think. So if we look at animating the camera, you can see there's something that's not quite right here. And that's my fault. I've not put the relevant things into the right group. So these contact glows and the foreground should be inside that 3D group. So let's pop them in there. And now that's working better. But you'll notice there's one other issue, which is that the glows get cropped, chopped off by the floor. And there's a very easy way in which we can fix that, and that's to come to the 3D group here and turn on layer order. And now everything is working as it should because of that layer order switch. So it's it's overriding the, the 3D properties of that group and, and putting that on top regardless. So then let's animate the camera. Let's come to Properties, let's uh, reset the Y rotation and let's add a camera behavior, sweep. And we'll go for negative 30 for the start and 10 for the end. So we just get a gentle sweep around. Now, one of the things I, I want you to notice as we're previewing this, you can see that the floor is kind of crawling around a bit. 
And that's because when you come to render it, you'll need to switch to best. And I hope you can see that now that, that crawling has, has stopped. And we need to do a little bit more tidying up on the group here. Their main glow, because of the way I've messed it up, the main glow has ended up at the bottom of that group. So we actually need to move it out to the top. And there you go, it's sitting over the top of everything. And that's obviously looks a lot better. So we're almost at the end, but I wanted to show you that into this foreground group, or rather into the contents group, we can actually put anything that we want. So I'm going to select the text tool and into the contents group, I'm going to type text. And let's turn off the other elements, go for a funky color on the text, make it bigger, center it up. You can see that now that comes through the floor as well. But let's do something more fun than that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off and the, turn these elements back on again. And I'm going to import into this group a new asset. So pretend logo, it's in the assets folder. I'm going to set it scale down to, I think, 65% and it's Y position to negative 325. And then what we can do is with our contents group here, we can bring that up after a while. So let's come to about five seconds or something and let's keyframe that position. Let's come forward to, I don't know, let's go for nine seconds. And then if we just drag it up, you can see that that logo comes through the floor along with everything else. And it looks like that. Obviously, my hue saturation is, is killing the colors of my logo a bit. So I'd probably need to apply that to the, the shapes rather than everything else. But, but you get the idea. You can literally just put anything in there and immediately the effect will work. And it looks really rather nice. I do very much like this effect of the, the glow touching the floor, which I think is is really the key to making this, this effect work. Just one tiny little detail before we go. I don't like the way we're seeing that rather obvious tiling on the floor in the area where we're seeing that reflection. So what we could do is come into there and set a value of negative 540 on Z. And that just moves that back out of the way. And uh, it's much less obvious. Anyway, don't know why I bothered with that, but, but you get the idea. And very finally, it's good practice to make sure that everything is composited against black. If we look at our alpha channel, you'll see we've actually got some transparency back here in the background, and that potentially could lead to problems you never know. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new group. We don't want it to be 3D. We want to move it behind everything else. And into it, we want to put a color solid and we want to set that color to black. And now if we look at our alpha channel, it's, it's solid and we avoid any kind of unfortunate artifacts. And you'd be they're particularly likely when, when you've got elements like glows here, if you're not actually compositing them on black. So I hope that's been an interesting tutorial. Thanks very much indeed for watching. And I hope to see you again another time. And of course, a very big thank you to all my very generous patrons.